Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Some people drove a long way to be in Detroit today. What is to try out for Jeopardy, Alex? We'll take you inside <laughs> the auditions. A convicted drug felon makes a big mistake on social media. These photos brought the feds to his front door. And it's a troubling image that has one Michigan Police Department taking a lot of heat. A little boy waiting for his mother in handcuffs. Topping our news tonight at 6, the Flint Police Department staring down a federal lawsuit over their treatment of a 7-year-old with ADHD. The incident happened back in 2015 when the boy was attending an after-school program and someone didn't like his behavior. Somehow, he ended up in police handcuffs. And now the ACLU is getting involved. Coco McAvoy joins us live with more. Coco. Good evening to both of you. This video sparked a lot of outrage when it happened in 2015. The boy's mother says he was in handcuffs for almost one hour because the officers couldn't find the key to open the handcuffs and set him free. So now there's a lawsuit. He ain't in here with no knife. He ain't in here with no gun. This video shows Cameron McCadden in handcuffs. He was just seven years old at the time. I don't care what he was doing. He don't deserve to be in no handcuffs. His mother, Crystal McCadden, says Cameron has ADHD and was at an after school program in 2015. She was told Cameron kicked a supply cart and ran around on the school bleachers. A school resource officer was called in. But I don't think that an officer should be called on a kid. How do you handcuff a seven year old child? Seven years old. He was seven years old. The ACLU filed a federal lawsuit today against the Flint Police Department. Have sued them because they have violated both federal and state law. They're taking the handcuffs off my son. The lawsuit lists a number of demands. Asking that the police withdraw completely from the elementary schools in the city of Flint. Crystal McCadden says Cameron had to go to therapy. These last two years we've been working a lot with him to get him to understand he should not fear the police. She believes the police department should be held accountable for what happened to her son three years ago. We do not want this to happen to any other child in Flint, Michigan, let alone around the world. This is not fair. And the after school program is also listed in this lawsuit. We did reach out to the city of Flint for comment. They said they cannot comment on this lawsuit and they haven't yet received a copy of it either. Back to you. Well, Coco, you mentioned the demand for no more officers in the elementary schools of Flint. Is that is that it for demands or is there also a request for compensation here? Yes, so they're also asking for compensation in this lawsuit, but they said the number has not yet been specified. All right, Coco, we'll stay on it. All right, four live radar showing what so many of our lawns have been waiting for a significant dose of rain. It's been a lot of hit and miss showers over these last uh, week or yeah. so, but that's a pretty good broad stroke. Let's see if it's going to get to all of us. Here's Ben. I'll tell you, we, we, we've gone from cheering this stuff and then we see this and we're like, oh boy, flash flood watch. We have gone out of the frying pan into the fire, so to speak. So most of the area is going to be watching for significant uh, accumulations of rain one to three inches area wide. The national National Weather Service says it is possible that some areas could see isolated spots of three to five inches of rain. I will preface that by saying I haven't seen that on any of the model data, but we're just going to throw it out there. That's what they're saying. Here's four live radar right now and everything so far is moving. We don't see any stationary cells. We don't see any bands that are setting up shop, so it's just a good soaking as these bands start to move through. One of them sitting on the city right now, and we've got another one out here to the west. So far, those rainfall totals about two tenths of an inch is most of what we've got, but it will increase overnight. Temperatures in the 70s, and we'll talk more about what's to come in just a few minutes. Don't forget to download our local forecasters app. It does have interactive radar, severe weather alerts, and a lot more right in the palm of your hand. Download it for free in your app store by searching WDIV. Kim? Thieves are using stolen credit card information to fill your tank if you pay them cash. As Nick Monticelli reports tonight, it's gotten so bad, Oak Park Police have made 11 arrests in less than three months. Couples next. As manager of the Speedway at 10 Mile and Coolidge in Oak Park, Chloe Booker has a lot on her plate. 
catching thieves isn't in the job description, though. But she says it is obvious when someone is running a scam at her pumps. The customers come in and tell. So more than obvious, the guys are pulling the hoses around from one pump to another. They have the whole gas station lined up with cars waiting. In the last three months, the Oak Park Police Department has opened 17 cases of credit card fraud like this, and they've already made 11 arrests. Suspects will steal credit card information and then program it onto other cards, like gift cards, and then offer to buy you gas if you pay them a discounted price in cash. They, they could put your card number onto a Panera Bread gift card. Like, guy the other day had 32 gift cards on them. 32 gift cards. So here's how this works. The bad guy or bad girl will have a stolen credit card and then tell his friends that they're all going to be over here offering discounted gas. Tell them that if you pay him 20 bucks, he'll use the card and fill you up. Or he'll walk around a gas station like this one and just offer strangers discounted gas. We're definitely not going to tolerate it here in Oak Park. Uh, and I'm sure other departments around the metro area are probably uh, having the same issues, and I'm sure they're not going to tolerate it either. This has also been a problem at this Shell gas station at Nine Mile in Greenfield. In fact, this is such a problem. Last weekend, Oak Park PD arrested four more suspects. There's no indication that they're working together or they're part of a ring. Uh, I just think it's, um, you know, prevalent right now in, in, in the metro area and probably around the United States. We try to do what we can. A lookout. If I catch them, they going down. In Oak Park, Nick Monticelli, Local 4. All right, Nick. Uh, a be on the lookout alert from Clinton Township Police today. They want to speak with this man in connection with a suspected case of criminal sexual conduct. Police say this man is 70 years old, speaks with an accent, possibly Croatian, but as you can see, frequently rides an older style black and white bike on Charter Hills between 16 Mile and Weybridge. Again, they'd like to talk to this man. If you recognize the man in the photo, contact Clinton Township Police. A convicted felon is facing new charges after posting social media photos of himself with guns while still on probation. Take a look here at this photo from Nathaniel Bland's Instagram account. The feds say that's him pointing the weapon directly at the camera in his profile picture there. Investigators say Bland also posted these photos with guns in his lap, prompting agents to execute a search warrant. Officials recovered numerous weapons in the search. Bland has been charged with illegal possession of firearms and ammunition. He's expected to go before a judge sometime later this week. Credit union in Detroit has been forced to close over what the state calls operating in an unsafe and unsound manner. The Greater Christ Baptist Church Credit Union on Detroit's east side was shut down today. Unclear what the exact issues are, but the National Credit Union Association Reports had lost more than $26,000 last year. A service hotline is open for members. Uh, regula Michigan regulators say member deposits will be protected. Well, how often have you watched Jeopardy week 9 to 730 right here on Local 4 and said, I, I totally, I could totally. do that. I could do Own that. that. <laughs> Today, some folks got a chance to prove whether they actually could, whether they've got what it takes, because the show's been holding auditions in Detroit. This reporter among them. Who is Steve Garagiola? Bingo. <laughs> Come on in, pick a seat. Every year, about 80,000 people take the online test trying to become a contestant on Jeopardy. Don't be shy. Come on. Finalists are chosen for a live tryout like this one today at the Book Cadillac. This photochemical haze. You're just looking for somebody who can play the game well and is interesting to watch playing the game. He was assassinated. Today's audition starts with a test of 50 questions. This Canadian city is actually south of Detroit. Okay, I'll give it a try. Very good. Keep it going. We get eight seconds to answer each question. Let me tell you, this really is pressure. You have to be so fast, and then if you're on the spot, then your mind goes blank. How did you do? I think I did okay, not great, but okay. The Jeopardy team then grades the test. How did I do? We never discuss test scores. Oh, and I'm glad of that. Next comes the live action test, game conditions. First president for two. Ah, that guy in the middle. I don't know what it is about him, but he's playing like a champion today. I'm starting my second year of graduate study at the University of Notre Dame. Oh, that's, I've heard of them. Jeopardy is in its 35th season. Alex Trebek, now 78 years old, has been there from the beginning. One thing I'm curious about. Would it be all right if I picked the next category? What does Alex think of SNL's Jeopardy? Is it flattering or offensive? 
Well, thank you, Sean. That means a lot. He thinks it's fantastic. He was actually there um, for the anniversary a special that they did a couple of years ago. Yes. Crossword clues, 400. Only two or three from this group will likely make it onto the show. For the others, it's try, try again. Time for me to pick a clue. Contestants who didn't make the cut for 200. What is me? I'm Steve Garagiola, Local 4. And of course, Steve is going to pick the other uh, Notre Dame alum who yes, is trying I, out there. That's didn't great. hide that very well at all. <laughs> now, we first supported, of course, last night, Alex Trebek is hinting that he might leave as the host of Jeopardy in 2020. He says it's about 50-50 when his yeah. contract is up. Yeah, and some of the names being tossed around as potential successors include Ken Jennings. We all remember mm, him. Yes. He's won a lot of times yeah. on Jeopardy. Um, LeVar Burton and NHL announcer uh, Alex Faust, who is kind of a new name, 28 yeah, years old, guy. but a young yep, kid. Yep. Yeah, um, he's an announcer for the Kings out there. All right, well, uh, personally, I'd nominate Lester Holt, but he's pretty busy with NBC <laughs> Nightly News, which you can see immediately following this broadcast. Uh, he joins us live from New York with a preview. I don't see why you couldn't fit that into your schedule, Lester. <laughs> Well, let me uh, let me do an audition here. This this successful television news anchor has no interest in doing Jeopardy. <laughs> Who is Who Lester is? Holt? <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> there you go. Maybe I have a future. Maybe I have a future. Looks like a great job, though. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Anyway, let me tell you what's coming up tonight on NBC Nightly News. We're looking at plastic guns tonight. 3D homemade knockoffs. There's an urgent effort by several states to keep the know-how off the Internet. We're going to tell you about that. Also, Facebook blowing the whistle on what may, may be another attempt to sow discord in America's elections. Is it the Russians? We'll have that when we see you coming up on Nightly News. We'll send it back to you now in Detroit. All right, Lester. I don't think Alec is going anywhere. I don't actually. think so. I think yeah. he's teasing us all. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. All right, Lester. We'll see you again later. Coming up in about uh, 19 minutes from now. Still ahead. Uh, the end has come for a place Detroit sports fans have been stopping for beers and barbecue over the past 31 years. We'll have that coming up. And next, Police say this couple stole a phone right in front of a child. Wait until you hear what happened when someone sent that phone a text message. And as we go to break, a reminder to be heard and go vote. One week from today in the primary election, it's your first chance to weigh in on big races for governor, U.S. Congress, and the state legislature. Unfortunately, last time around, turnout was less than half of the voting public in southeast Michigan. We all have political opinions. As we've been telling you, don't just share them on social media share them in the voting booth, August 7th.